Herman wanted to surprise his mother after serving five years in a medium security prison. He had finally returned to his hometown village. Where else could he go when he had no one in the whole wide world except his mother? The native village had changed significantly during those years. But it was not surprising. The country itself had changed while he was incarcerated. Unemployment, empty shelves, crumbling collective farms, and abandoned villages were now a part of it. The youth flocked to the cities, while the elderly lived out their days in old dilapidated houses. However, those who remained in the villages continued with their usual activities, cultivating gardens, tending to livestock, going to the forest for mushrooms, berries, and fishing. Herman approached his childhood home and knocked on the window several times, but there was no response. Then he headed towards the porch and was about to knock on the door when it swung open, drenching him from head to toe with a bucket of water. What a welcome, the young man laughed. That's quite a surprise, Mama. Looks like you succeeded. Oh my, my son, his mother exclaimed, surprised and overjoyed at his return. She wiped her teary eyes and rested her head on his chest or on Irina Yevgenievna's shoulder, saying she had been eagerly waiting for him, but didn't have time to prepare anything for the table. It doesn't matter, Mama, he assured her. The most important thing is that we're together again. I swear to you, I'll never go back to prison. Irina Yevgenievna burst into tears. Herman was a very good guy, not malicious or belligerent, but very trusting. She had raised him alone since his father was not around, and she had to work hard in the collective farm. At some point, she lost track of him, and he got involved with the wrong crowd, committing a crime that led to his trial and imprisonment. But now, thank God, it was all behind them. The only concern was what to do for work since there were no more collective farms. Even Herman himself was contemplating what to do next. Not far from their village, in the forest, an enterprising comrade opened a sawmill and was hiring staff. In search of work, a former convict decided to apply there because no one else wanted to hire him. They took him on at the sawmill on a probationary basis, starting as a laborer, but the owner said that if he worked well and honestly, he would promote him to the machine. Herman was determined to hold on to this job no matter what. Every morning, a truck brought him to the sawmill, and his mother packed lunch for him to take. He enjoyed working in the fresh air, and during breaks, no one scolded him. In the evening, he would return home by truck, and it was much more pleasant to spend the night in a clean and cozy hut than in a work barrack. Everything suited Herman, he dreamt of bringing his first paycheck to his mother in a couple of months. He was already working on a permanent basis, and the salary was decent for that time, especially considering his past as a convict and the difficulties he had faced in life. Things were starting to improve for him. Herman began earning money honestly, and soon he had a little companion. He had long been suggesting to his mother to take a dog home, but she refused, saying they couldn't afford to feed it, and she wasn't quite stable yet. The woman was always being cautious. It was a rainy spring day, and as usual, Herman was working at his station in the forest. Lunchtime was approaching, and he decided to have his sandwich break. He ate the first one and reached for the second, but it wasn't there. The guy looked around and noticed the tip of a white tail in the bushes. He wondered who it could be, this audacious thief. Carefully circling the bush, he forcefully pushed the branches apart and saw a small, beautiful kitten. He took it by the scruff of its neck, lifted it up, and started examining it. The kitten had large fluffy stripes, looked at Herman with round yellow eyes, and its ears were pressed down. The tip of its tail was held between its hind legs, unlike most mammals that have no white patches on their fur. This one was special. Herman gently shook the kitten in the air and asked, So, you're a little thief, aren't you? Aren't you afraid of punishment? The kitten just hissed softly in response. Herman gave the little one the remains of his lunch, quickly finishing off the chicken leg. 
the kitten ran off into the forest. But the next day, just before lunch, he once again stuck his cute little face out of the bushes. Now he started coming regularly for lunch with Herman. The guy realized that the kitten was lonely, he didn't have a mother. It saddened him because it was unfair. After all, he himself had a mother, and the guy decided to take the little one home. He thought the kitten should have a family too. When Herman arrived home, he ceremoniously gave the kitten to his mother. She started to protest, saying that the kitten needed to be fed properly. But the guy reassured her that soon the kitty would catch its own food. After all, there were plenty of mice and birds in the area. And that's the right kind of food for him. After dinner, the kitten fell asleep. Irina Yevgenievna approached him and started admiring him. She had never seen such a cute wild cat before. They named the little one Bayun. Every morning, she would make pancakes, and Bayun would always get a couple from the table. He happily ate the pancake and ran for another one or to play. Irina Yevgenievna told her son that Bayun was still very young and couldn't go to work with him. He would stay with her and help in the garden. Herman smiled and realized that his mother had finally accepted the new pet. He would take out a comb from his pocket and comb the burdock out of Bayan's tail. The cat would grab his hand with his paws but wouldn't let go, and Herman enjoyed this activity. The little comb would get stuck in his thick fur, but he really enjoyed it. Soon, Bayun gained weight, grew up, and became even more fluffy. He turned into a formidable adult beast with sharp claws and teeth. When Bayun grew up, Herman started taking him to the sawmill. The cat enjoyed wandering around the area but never missed lunch. After having a snack, he often lounged in the shade under the canopy or in the wooden utility room, as his feline soul desired. Herman squatted down and stroked the cat, took out the comb, and remembered how he used to feel the burdock in his fur. If they got stuck again, he would start combing Bayan's fluffy sides. Here, he caught his hand with his paws again. Suddenly, Bayun tensed up and transformed entirely. His ears moved in different directions like locators, finally detecting all the sounds around. He jumped up and rushed into the nearest bushes to set up an ambush there. Herman paid no attention to the cat's antics and went on with his work. A cat is a cat, it roams wherever it wants, whenever it wants. But Bayun had already sensed something amiss. He felt that his owner was in danger and hid, especially since they were together at the sawmill today. Two people approached him from behind, though Herman didn't hear them due to the noise of the machine. He had headphones on to protect against vibrations. Suddenly, he felt something sharp hit him, and he quickly turned around. Two people were standing behind him, holding knives. They seemed unfamiliar, but he felt like he had seen those faces somewhere before. Hello, German, didn't expect us. We need a partner for a job. Let's go, we need a couple of helpers. Will you join us? German, who had already forgotten his old nickname, which later turned into a criminal alias, Vorovsky, responded that he had promised himself, and even his mother, that he would never return to prison. That's what he said to his old buddies. But such an answer didn't satisfy the bandits, they decided to avenge him for his refusal. However, things didn't go as they planned. With a wild scream, Bayun burst out of the bushes and attacked the tormentors of his owner. The furious beast, a wild cat, tore the bandits apart with its teeth and claws. The assault was swift and merciless. The bandits didn't even understand what was happening and screamed as they fled through the forest, clutching their bloody wounds. And Bayun, in his rage, chased them for kilometers through the forest, far away from the sawmill. The kind old lady was enjoying a period of time in nature when she encountered a pregnant Boblinx who needed help. The ending of her story is sad, but she is also full of hope for the future. Greta Novak is a retired person who enjoys a peaceful life in the picturesque Slovenian Canal City. 
Greta has raised a lovely family and looks forward to seeing her children and grandchildren from time to time. Unfortunately, however, they rarely come and are far apart. Greta's children move to different cities to support their families. This is their normal development into adulthood. Although it is difficult for her to leave them, she supports their independence. However, after the death of her spouse, Greta's life eventually became lonely. As a housewife, this new chapter is undoubtedly a challenge for her. Fortunately for her, she lives in a place with beautiful scenery and rich biodiversity. The name Canal City comes from the beautiful turquoise canal that flows through it. The water is clear and fresh. In these post-industrial times, it is a miracle that streams are still so clean without too much human intervention. But this canal is not the only factor that makes this city so special. Canal City is also surrounded by forests, filled with trees and wildlife, and seems to echo with prosperity. Now, this is the peaceful and organic existence that Greta resonates with. Although one side of the city nestles against a small mountain range, every spring, there is fresh water, as well as an explosion of life when animals wake up from hibernation. Greta found the greatest peace during this period, as it was the time of year for biological growth and reproduction. In a beautiful city, wherever she goes, she will encounter various creatures. For this reason, Greta spends almost entirely outdoors during the spring. She likes walking in the forest as a hobby. After a year or two, her interest expanded and she began fishing by the water. It was the day she decided her fate when a new furry friend appeared from the bushes. Greta was about to LNXCH a trout. When she heard a slight rustle in the bushes behind her, she remained focused on the task at hand and did not want to lose her LNXCH, but once the trout was safely out of the water and hanging on Greta's hook, she seized the opportunity to look around. It was too quiet to be alone, so Greta turned her gaze to the ground. She sat quietly holding the fish and coaxed out a real bobblinks in just a few minutes. The lynx moved slowly and clumsily. Greta immediately knew that there was a problem with the animal. Fortunately for Lynx, he met a woman with a golden heart and free time. So Greta waited and made sure Lynx felt comfortable in front of her. Then she slowly approached the Lynx-like creature, and the fresh trout reached out to it. She is more accustomed to the behavior pattern of domestic dogs, but is surprised that Lynx doesn't crave food. It stayed where it was and let Greta walk along. She placed the trout in front of the Bob Lynx's nose. Very close, Greta was clearly aware of what had happened to the poor animal. Lynx is a female and pregnant. Out of concern, Greta opted for a gentle examination to better understand the mother's condition. Bob Lynx's hind legs are covered with blood in different air dried states. So Lynx has bled many times and stopped bleeding several times. Greta realized that the poor creature was struggling to give birth. She felt full of sympathy. As a mother, she knows the pain of childbirth and can only imagine the pain of childbirth. This is an emergency. In order to help Lynx, Greta first made her accustomed to the existence of humans. He sat with the Lynx for several hours, chewing the fish in front of her from time to time. When he reached the point where Greta could touch her, Greta managed to calm her down, hoping that the food and care would be enough for Lynx to trust her. Finally, Greta slowly took her to her house. This is a slow process that can help Greta understand how much pain Lynx has experienced. But Perseverance won, and that night Greta let the Lynx rest on some blankets on her porch. She can give her water and enough comfort to rest for a moment. This is a fragile situation. Like any complications of childbirth, they have a time limit before urgent action must be taken. Greta delayed building trust with Lynx, but also did something before it was too late. When Greta realized that the poor thing was too painful to fall asleep or even doze off, she knew she needed to find a way to get the child there. 
Therefore, she used her Google search capabilities and a well-stocked first aid kit to try to help the mother deliver the baby. It was a long night. Lynx was delirious and gently hit Greta a few times. Greta knew that this was the pain that caused this behavior and did not give up helping the lynx. For animals, she always utters a calm and soothing voice unswervingly. After bleeding and crying loudly, the first healthy cub successfully took its first breath. Greta knows that animals like boblinxes can have multiple children, so she works quickly. She cut off the baby's umbilical cord and stuffed it next to her mother's head. The lynx's energy comes from the smell of her kitten, which seems to have restored some vitality to her. This is inspiring for Greta. The birth has not ended anyway, but at least seeing her children is exciting for her. Soon, the next cub was ready to come out, and Greta and Lynx repeated the process. Throughout the evening, the two successfully delivered four healthy babies. Each birth places a greater burden on Lynx, and Greta watches as childbirth drains her energy. Greta breathed a long sigh of relief as the sun rose and began to poke her head out from behind the mountains. Lynx's mother finally relaxed and Greta was confident that the delivery had been completed. She whispered words of encouragement to her and surrounded her with her garbage. Lynx finally fell asleep amid the cooing and meowing of her baby in her ear, Greta's hand gently caressing her head. Everything was fine, the sun shone all over the city, and Greta's neighbors began a new day. From the moment Lynx approached Greta at the water's edge until this decisive moment, this lovely animal was fighting for her life, but she could never do it again. The Lynx woke up for a moment, looked at her cub, and wept silently, knowing that she wanted them to be alone. Fortunately, Greta's hand was placed on her back, which was a great comfort to her. Lynx turned her head towards humanity, her eyes filled with pain and gratitude, as if begging her to take care of her child. Then she closed her eyes for the last time. As Lynx's body sank deeper and more relaxed, Greta watched the pain disappear from her face. Her face became calm as if she were asleep. Her children snuggled close to her while Greta refused to stop touching her. She stayed until Lynx took her last breath and calmly passed away. For Greta, it was a heavy emotional evening, and the death of her new friend made her burst into tears. Several neighbors noticed something strange as they passed by and stopped to comfort her. In the next few weeks, Greta learned about her value in the community. She adopted the complete Bob Lynx cubs and began to raise them with love and care. In return, Greta received strong support from the community. She continued her peaceful life in her beautiful city. Knowing that she is never alone.